This is Not Your Father's Fundraising Podcast, a podcast about, you guessed it, nonprofit fundraising. This isn't the first podcast about it, but definitely not like any others you've listened to. This is a podcast for fundraisers by fundraisers. No boring charts or the same stale best practices you've heard for years. No ideas that only work in theory here. No concepts from people who aren't in the same trenches as you are every single day. Each week, you'll get practical strategies and tips to craft messages that engage donors and raise more money. This isn't smoke and mirrors. Everything has been pressure tested in the real world. Plus, you can start using them as soon as the episode ends. Now, here are your hosts, Ryan Thomas and Steve Thomas. Hello. Welcome to Not Your Father's Fundraising Podcast. I'm Ryan Thomas, Vice President at Onicity. And I'm Steve Thomas, uh, CEO and one of the founding partners of Onicity. And Onicity is spelled O-N-E-I-C-I-T-Y. One of these times I'm going to get that wrong. <laughs> That's going to be embarrassing. <laughs> Just wait for it. It'll but, happen. Uh, <laughs> We're on a 13-episode streak of me getting it correct, so we're okay. Uh, we're a boutique ad agency focused on marketing and fundraising for nonprofits, and we've been in business for well over a decade, and we have lots of members on our team who measure their time in this business uh, in the decades, which uh, we don't get into how many decades, just that they measure their time over decades. And if you are paying close attention, you may have noticed that we share a last name, uh, mm-hmm. not just an easy uh, cut of the intro. It, uh, it is actually <laughs> true. It's not just lazy editing on our part. And that may make the title of the podcast make a little more sense. Or not. It's okay. You know, just move, I mean, move along. You yeah. know, it's as long good. as you're listening, that's, yeah. that's what matters. Yeah. As long as you get something out of it, right? Yeah, that's right. And we started this podcast because we're in this work. And when you do this, you know that it doesn't stop at 5 o'clock, sometimes 7 o'clock. And it doesn't stop on Friday or Saturday. You're, you're, when you're in this work, you are in this work. Yeah. And we were having conversations, talking about ideas, things we'd seen, and we realized we had a podcast and we just weren't recording it or putting it up on the internet, on the interwebs. So uh, we grabbed a couple mics and got to work. And now you get to sit with us and uh, talk about it with us and listen, as opposed to the people we used to bore at dinner <laughs> and at cookouts. Well, we and, still bore a few people, but anyway, and trust we get to us, share with yeah, us. <laughs> and trust us, nobody is happier that we do this here uh, than the people we used to try to explain. Here's what a response device is over pulled pork. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. So, onicity.com is the email uh, domain that when you do your five-star reviews, you should send us a question or any feedback. Uh, and any... we've, we've, we've uh, lifted the moratorium on only positive feedback, right? We're, we're for now. A, yeah. yeah. We're going to uh, For now, just take we're, it. we're taking everything. Yeah. And uh, send that to podcast at onicity.com. But on the review side, we are only accepting four and a half stars up. Yeah. We're not... We don't necessarily need five, but four and a half at least. Come on. Come on. We're trying. We're learning. Yeah. So it's, a thing. It's, a, it's a work in progress. Yeah. Eventually, and we're just never going to come out of beta. Yeah. I think that's the, the way to look at it and always be iterating and figuring out, you know, what didn't work so well. This will just be hopefully a three-year beta and that'll be fine. <laughs> we'll be like a tech startup. <laughs> So five-star reviews on wherever it is you downloaded this podcast and any questions. We also love questions, things we ought to cover. Hey, you didn't explain this as much as I would have liked. Um, Or that made no sense whatsoever. Will you take another run at that? Yeah. Never talk about this again. (laughs) We haven't gotten one of those yet, which I'm surprised. But any of that, send it to podcast at winicity.com and uh, we actually do check it. We don't just send that to the spam folder or leave it with the intern. The other thing I realized that we would love to have is if you're trying to solve kind of a naughty problem 
and can't quite... K-N-O-T-T-Y. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's a different podcast. <laughs> Awkward. That is also not your father's <laughs> fundraising podcast. <laughs> okay. I'm supposed to be the troublemaker. You're not the troublemaker. You're the steady one, remember? I, so, okay. I'm trying to flip the script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't like no. how it went. <laughs> yeah, it was Some kind of... of the other time. <laughs> yeah, last week. <laughs> yeah. What were that? What was that? Episode 9 and 10. I... I yeah. Anyway, so yeah, if you're trying to solve a difficult problem, difficult problem. or or something that you can't quite get you'd, you'd love a second opinion on, shoot it to us. We'll see if we can uh, we can talk about it because very seldom uh, are problems only yours. There's almost always if you're dealing with something, somebody else is dealing with it too. And so maybe we can. can that's not what I hear can. internally. I get told a lot. Well, that's your problem. That one. <laughs> yeah. We have a member on our team who tells me a lot. Yeah, well, that's your problem. Well, that's your problem, and that's usually the person who's as I because I also get that, but it's usually because I you hit your dates. I usually I sometimes yeah. cause my own problems. I've, I kind of that miss is a accurate. Bit. Yes. So wow. So send us. That would be really fun to do a collection mm-hmm. of difficult problems people are having. Got a case study ish kind of Ooh, stuff. Yeah. We'd, we'd protect. We'd protect yeah, anonymity yeah, we'll, and all that stuff, and just you know, I mean. We'll wear we'll wear disguises when we do it. Yeah, and, the fake must, the uh, mustache yeah. and, the, uh, and the, the glasses. The glasses. And the nose. <laughs> yeah, so send that to podcast at oneicity and you can have your difficult problem featured. Well, I was gonna say live and on air, but I guess it's live when we do it, but yeah. not live when you listen. Yeah. But first, uh, our first segment is something that we've seen in the wild, and it's. Fundraising related, something we've encountered, whether it's digital, print, um, you know, even I guess billboards yeah. or bus ads or something. I'm going to do one on on the blimp I saw. So you know. Okay, we'll go. No. <laughs> oh. Okay. No, you can't call your shot like that. And <laughs> I don't want to mess up your carefully okay. orchestrated plan. Yeah. Well. Made it through the first. Yeah. Five yeah. I, I did. We didn't have a counter, but uh, so we made it a little bit. All right. So I'm just going to go first. Yeah. Mine. Um, Mine got thrown away because not everybody at my house <laughs> knows what my keep it stack means. Because if oh. it's in the kitchen, yeah, I was like, oh, I read this. And but I want to go back to I it. I wanted to keep it for the podcast. And so I, I put it aside on the counter because I had to go do something else. And then I came back and it was gone. <laughs> not indicative of the fundraising. But on the envelope... It's is from an organization that uh, my wife and I support and we, we enjoy working with. Uh, and it said it was, it was basically, there was no art to it. It had my address on it. And then in the bottom right corner in sort of a handwriting font, it said, you're going to love how it feels to open this envelope. And I definitely opened and I read the letter and it was, it was a pretty good appeal. It wasn't bad. It wasn't horrible. But the whole time I was thinking, well, I don't feel... I haven't felt that yet. ...any better. You're waiting for that tingly, wonderful yeah, feeling, I didn't, right? I didn't know if it was laced with something. <laughs> if, if, you know, I've heard of glitter bombs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe it's, I don't know, some kind of... If it came from, you know, Washington, Oregon, you could, you know, you probably, lot, you might not pass the drug test taken later. But uh, I, I was distracted by that. And then it got me thinking, well, okay, they were so close. Because fundraising, when we do effective fundraising, a lot of times we are using emotion and helping someone understand what they're going to feel when they give. And a lot of times we've even said almost what they've said of, you're going to love how it feels to give a gift. You're going to love how it feels when you help this person. And that... That's a clear tie, and I think that works because I think we've talked about before the warm glow mm-hmm. that a donor gets when they help. When you do something nice, it feels good. Mm-hmm. And this appeal was so close, and you could have done, you're going to love how it feels to help uh, help this person, or you're going to love how it feels. Even You could have even gone, you're going to love how it feels to read this letter, but... By being so uh, almost like Babe Ruth calling the shot off opening the envelope, the second I opened the envelope and I didn't feel any different, I was just constantly thinking of that. Do prediction. you think that? Do you think everybody at home? Not everybody. Do you think a, somebody who's not in the business would have had those feelings? 
That's a good question. I think so because yeah. it, it, it's but very, it was an explicit promise. And that's and that's what it is because when you say you're gonna love how it feels to open this envelope, it is going to rain in ten minutes. Mm-hmm. That's different than you should bring an umbrella. You're gonna feel good after you're gonna feel better after you read this letter than you do right now. Mm-hmm. Those are the kinds of things that still have the emotional impact and could get somebody to give without being distracting and saying, well, you didn't follow through on that. And if I'm thinking about that, I'm not thinking about your issues. That's so I'm, I'm kind of bummed. You got thrown away, but, or well, I, one of the things I want to say is I, I remember, uh, I don't know, maybe four years ago, we began, uh, experimenting with that kind of content to, um, uh, help a donor anticipate an emotional experience and it is powerful, but if you don't, if you don't pay off, it's like everything else with it in, in the, in well, maybe everything else in marketing generally, but certainly in, in this space, you, you've got to deliver on your promises. You're the org who cried wolf. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And sometimes there's no wolf. It's even worse. Yeah, it's worse. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. You ready for me? Yeah. Okay. I'm ready, to, wait, hear, I'm ready wait, to hear about the blimp. I was waiting for you to have no, no I did see a balloon, but no blimp. Um, okay, so this one's just so uh, this one is actually not seen in the wild. It's in the wild right now, today. There's an org who uh, we have indicated that we will participate in something on their behalf and and will help with and uh, financially. And so um, we have emailed saying yeah, we'd like to know, you know, what you need and how we can help and what we can do. Okay. And this is Chris and me. And they left us a voicemail message. So we emailed again and said, hey, saw that, got your voicemail message, uh, would like to know more information. And was, sent- was the voicemail message informative? No, it was tried to reach you. Oh. And would you call me back? Okay. So we emailed again saying basically the same thing as the first email, but, but saying, Hey, give us more information, right? You know, (laughs) and because we love them, uh, we didn't just forward the previous email, which is what I would do in my cranky moments. Um, and they left another voicemail message. So, so my scene in the wild is pay it. And I'm, I just, I'll just go ahead and apologize up front. This, this seems so basic, but I see this is another one of those blocking and tackling mistakes that really, uh, what's the meme? Grind the gears of a yep. donor. I That's mean, right. it, 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 they are, because there are people, uh, maybe there are three kinds of people. There are email people. No, yeah, there are email people, there are phone people, and there are in-person people. And you know, there are probably others, but yeah. for the purposes of the oversimplification, three kinds of people. If someone keeps saying to you, email me, don't call them. If you are trying to build a relationship with them. And, yeah. and if they say, if they say, give me a call and you keep emailing and saying, why aren't you answering your email? It could be that they're phone people. Or if someone says, hey, come by, let's have coffee. That's probably somebody who wants you to come by. So just as you as you uh, deal with donors, uh, well, maybe even deal with, with just people, with and people in yeah. general. Because yeah. you, you can get caught in that trap of uh, the golden rule, you know, treat somebody how you would want to be treated. Uh, quickly out of college in my first job, a guy said, uh, okay, that's good, but here's the platinum rule which is treat people how they want to be treated. Nice. And nice. I don't want to get into gold and platinum and overarching Jesus, but it is better to treat people and deal with donors how they want to be dealt with, <laughs> not how you want to be dealt with. Exactly. Because I guarantee you the person you're dealing with is, a phone, is clearly a phone person. No question. I'm <laughs> very comfortable with the voicemail. And, hey, let's talk. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Well, and... Imagine, imagine say, if they were, Hey, I'd like to give you my, I, I, I'd like to put this five figure gift on my credit card. Cause I want all the miles. Yeah. So just send us your send check, us a check and we'll, and, and we'll make that happen. Yeah. So here's my, here's my Amex card. 
yeah, yeah, just send us a check or, or an a And I've heard versions of this story uh, uh, from a variety of, you know, the, the things get told around, you know, the major donor water cooler. And it, 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 is, it is so simple but so easy to miss because we're all self-centered. Yeah. And, and if we if we aren't really paying attention, everything becomes I you know I you know I'm bad about joking that everything's about me and the company and I try not to make not it so like much. that. I mean, <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> the, be, the best jokes are the truest jokes, right? <laughs> so somebody but, said that. But we, you just you have to be able to allow a donor to signal and you have to be paying attention. That will not make or break things, but the the converse not paying attention can make or break because yeah. you leave me enough voicemail messages and ignore those emails. I'm going to pay attention to somebody else. Yeah. I, I hate, yeah, I'm not a phone person. So, so it, yeah, I, I, no it, more phone calls from me ever. Yeah. That, great. <laughs> this has been a great episode. Thanks very much. We've already gotten something done. We've, yeah. we've already been productive. <laughs> So instead of just trying to get someone to not call you anymore, yeah. something else I, you should be doing, oh. if you're not already, that's a segue for those of us in the biz, uh, is another segment that we like to do. And this is something that's very actionable. Because a lot of times the meat of our episodes are maybe a long tail, may take some weeks to get involved. Maybe get in a deeper place. strategy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big picture thing. Yeah, but yeah. We want something that as soon as you're done listening to the episode, because you should totally finish, you can... All the way out. All the way. Because the metrics show, you know. Yeah, we want that. We want the long tail, the end, the end of, of the bell curve. Uh, but we want something that you can enact immediately because you have an appeal coming up. You've got a newsletter coming up. You've got an email coming up, whatever it you is. Got the world to change. And in all of that, you're thinking, okay, how can I make this do as well as the benchmarks or how do I make this perform well or did this perform well? And the thing you should be doing if you're not already is compare yourself to yourself and nobody else. Hmm. You shouldn't wow. Be. But what about national benchmarks? I can find a national benchmark <laughs> that says just about anything <laughs> I want it to say. And something that worked for, an organization, even in your space, even in your, your niche, vertical, your, yeah. your niche mm -hmm. of the nonprofit space, well, they're not you and they're not your donors. And maybe not in your demo, your, your geographic area or with the there's, demographic of your donors. Tons of reasons. Yeah. And so don't compare yourself to anybody else because the only constant, the only apples to apples are you. And also don't, worry as much about those best practices. That's the same theory in that there aren't really too many best practices. There are exceptions that prove the rule that there aren't best practices, but for the most part, anything could work for your donors and it's worth testing and trying, but get, put, put your eyes on what that newsletter did last year versus this year instead of how your newsletter did against how that organization's newsletter did or, how, or what the, what, what the, your email the, open rate yeah, is the, versus the mythical. Uh, yeah. Cause Ooh. open rates, uh, that's a really good example. You can find open rates, you know, people say, Hey, if you're not getting an open rate of 15%, then you need to fire your agency. Okay. Well, how many organizations and lists included in that benchmark are well called? Meaning how many, how, how current is that email mm -hmm. list? Yeah. And there are some organizations we work with who are fine paying, you know, the rate for a campaign monitor, keep them at a list uh, size in the package to just give those people a chance. And they're very faithful and they just feel like eventually Jesus is going to move in their <laughs> hearts and in their inbox and they're going to open an email. <laughs> fine. Which is fine. <laughs> yeah. There's not a problem except, well, that drags down their open rate. Yeah. You look bad. And so now they look bad. And fortunately, most of our, most of our clients have some perspective and have heard us talk about Very this, smart. but that could save you some needless anguish because there are plenty of other things for you to worry about. Well, it's kind of like we were talking in a previous episode about 
choosing the right benchmark to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. If open rate is your primary benchmark, well, you can drive that way up. Or, or if, if uh, unsubscribes is your only mm -hmm. benchmark, oh, well, you can drive that way up. Or you got to have the right, gotta have the right metric and be, be paying attention mm -hmm. to, to what's happening in your file, right? Because it's the only constant. Exactly. It's your people against your, not against your people, but uh, your impacts against your impacts against your impacts. And this is probably too obvious, but you ought to say, What's the advantage? Why? How should that comparison against yourself go? Is it last month or? Oh, usually it should be year over year. Okay. That can change. September to September. Yeah, September to September. If you do multiple things in September, try to line those up. Uh, a lot of times in the holiday season, because many of our clients do a lot of impacts and a lot of fundraising in the fourth quarter. So we might take a Thanksgiving campaign versus a Thanksgiving campaign right? or a Christmas versus Christmas. But then at times we'll dive down even further and say, okay, of, of that group of four, who in this batting order did great? Who didn't do well? Let's kind of look yeah. at that. Yeah. That's beautiful. Don't yeah. compare last month to this month or your stuff this month versus somebody else's last month. Okay. Comparison. Yeah. I wish I could remember the quote about comparison being the something of something. It's the root of all badness or something. I don't know. I should have that asked you right. what you were doing. Yeah. You, we have Wi-Fi in here. You should have Googled I, if I while could, I was wrapping up. If I could have, I could have done that fast enough, I would have. But then it might have looked like I wasn't paying attention. And I was trying to look. Like hey, you were looking very interesting. I was doing the, the, that, the bobblehead dog mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. So, okay. So it'll be your turn to do the bobblehead dog yeah, yeah, thing. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm ready to bob. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So... <clears throat> Um, so I, one of the things I like about, and, and one of the things we're, you know, in all candor trying to, um, uh, do on the podcast is allow for people who, cause we know in our tribe, we have people who are running one person shops and some startups and some, some folks that, that are dealing in, in, you know, where they, 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 their staff is them. They are, they are the whole show. And then we have some some folks in our tribe that are larger organizations. And so in contrast to what you're talking about, um, I, I'm just going to say if you're in a larger organization, one of the things you need to do is um, spend a day or a week or some time, uh, not a drive-by, but in the, the sitting in the chair, looking at it, in the, the wherever and whoever does gift processing. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and this came out of the client meeting we, we were in uh, last week where one of our clients was talking about because of a, uh, I think, sick. It, yeah, there somebody was, was sick and somebody was out. And so this, uh, this leader, a very sharp person who, uh, great experience, knows the business. And this person, uh, uh, you know, if you're thinking levels, uh, they're dropping, you know, three or four or five levels because almost substituting, almost temping for the temp. I mean, not quite, but, but in their processing. Yeah. And, and, and this is a, a, a pretty sizable organization that, that receives n no small amount of gifts each day. And, and they're responsible. They're one of our primary contacts for fundraising and marketing for the organization. And they're, they were, they were talking about some of the things they learned by being in the room, opening the mail, seeing the handwriting that, you know, that, that wow, donors are actually writing us notes. And, and there's something powerful about um, the reality that comes from seeing somebody's handwriting saying, I love what you're doing. I'm with you. That's not the same thing as seeing it in like a summary or being told, we being got, told we got about five yeah, compliments. Exactly. Today. Go um, team. And, and then we also, in part of that conversation, um, uh, kind of spotted what might be uh, an opportunity for them to make a very small tweak, but came out of the awareness that they had from watching and seeing how donors are reacting to direct mail. It was, it was really impressive, and it was interesting. Uh, they were able to say, oh, yeah, we get that back a bunch. Or yeah, yeah. well, well I, just to say, one of the things that, that we were talking about was putting, 
we put uh, um, a blank uh, um, um, credit card form on the back of a response device in direct mail so that if someone wants to, they can actually fill it out uh, with a credit card number and all their information so that the organization can charge it. And I, I that just always makes me uncomfortable because I really don't think people ought to be and I'll, you shouldn't be sending. Don't, don't you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be sending your credit card information because yeah. our organ, our clients will help feed people. Somebody else might get a yeah. new TV. So, so uh, thankfully, all of our all of our clients uh, have good security in their their gift processing, and they have that high level of stuff. But so anyway, in conversation, I, I that's how that that's how it came about. Is I said, so how many do you get those? And and they were able to just pop right in and go, oh yeah, I I saw them, and we we're getting about this a, a, a week, and you know, it's like, wow, it was like so, an undercover boss moment. Oh, I hadn't thought about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was impressive. So, um, open the mail. Uh, be in that room, uh, and, and more than talking to those people, see it for yourself. Encounter it. You will spot uh, some some design things, some process things. We talked a few episodes back about business rules. You will think, oh my goodness, they are doing this differently than I ever imagined. Uh, we need to make sure we're, we adjust that or their idea is so good the way they're doing it. We got to forget all of that and do, go this direction. So spend a, spend a week in, uh, in uh, gift processing. Or do undercover boss. Either way. Yeah. Regardless of when you're listening to this episode, doesn't matter when, you probably recently have heard about COVID <laughs> and the coronavirus. I, I wondered how you were going to intro this part. <laughs> so, so was I. I also was wondering. And we're not quite at a new normal, whatever that is. We all got those emails last year mm -hmm. uh, talking about a new normal and we're all in this together. Yay. I didn't see any of those corporations at my doorstep helping out, but whatever. Nobody was helping tutor the kids, right? Yeah, nobody nobody was helping me figure out how to log into that stupid online school. <laughs> but whatever. We're regardless of your feelings on the new normal or any any of the current swirl, for the most part, most organizations have come through their COVID period. Kind of a turning the corner, maybe. Yeah, whether, uh, and we're, we're going to talk about whether it was a boon for your fundraising. Or a or, doggle. Or, or a doggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was good. Well, you got me on the naughty with the K. Yeah, the, oh yeah, man. Yeah. I'm just glad mine, my, I'm just glad mine didn't require the E um, explicit tag in Apple <laughs> Podcasts when we get to that point. <laughs> but regardless of if, COVID, the COVID period, because I don't want to act like COVID was good for people, but regardless of whether this last uh, year, 15 months was a huge high watermark for your organization or whether your fundraising really struggled, either way, we're, we're coming through that. We're turning that corner, like you said, which means we now think, okay, we're past COVID. Now what? And that can be a scary question, whether my stuff did really well last year or whether it did really bad. And uh, I think let's start with if your fundraising went really well, and then we can talk about if it didn't go well, and then regardless whether you're in both of those boats or no matter what happened, think about this. I've committed to not do another hour episode. Okay. Okay. So you're going to have to help me with that. All right. Well, I could just go crazy here. So, um, I'll give, I'll, I will give you, I'll give you the wrap it up if we get that far. Yeah. I'll, I'll do the neck job. Um, and, and I, I first wanted to say, I, 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 I don't think I have any answers. Um, and I would be, if I were in, if I were listening to this podcast or viewing, cause someday we're going to be 
sure yeah, someday we we're going to do video. Yeah, we're, we're sure, trying. Well, yeah, we're working on it. Um, however, you're receiving this information. Uh, I'd be suspicious of anybody who has all the answers because it's sort of unprecedented. Ooh, bum, <laughs> as we bum, heard bum. in all, we heard in all the advertising in 20. Um, I don't think I have ever had so many people, both clients and uh, we always talk about the tribe, just people we're connected to and people that are around us asking, how'd everybody do? Well, what, yeah. how was everyone's fundraising? Because you got a lot of we that, got too, that question. Yeah. yeah, a lot more yeah. than normal. Yeah. And, and I think it's because it was a weird time. And then you add to it, and I just want to say, and I want to try to to step into this carefully, is that let's just be candid and say there were a variety of differences of opinion about uh, what was going on and how severe the problem was and exactly what the problem was and blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, and, and, And that swirl that the turmoil associated with that was difficult for everyone. And I, I probably talked to more nonprofit CEOs during that period of time. I saw fewer of them in person (laughs) and talked to more of them on the phone than I have in any previous uh, time period because People were unsettled and they didn't have a, they, there was no way to look back and go, oh, this was like that, or this was like that. Because, I mean, as tough as the, the economic downturn of 2008 was at various points, this was different. And Well, and you could look at previous economic downturns. Yep. yep. Whether the, you know, the causes would have been different. There are lots of different factors, but you could at least say, well, here's what we did the last time the economy tanked. Let's at least start there. <laughs> and, you know. Yeah. Anybody who can look back and say, okay, let's do, let's go back to what we did the last time there was a pandemic. Yeah, that'd be good. So it'd be uh, the swine flu in the teens, right? The ni- 1910s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if 1918 and any, uh, you may have some older people in your fundraising <laughs> department, but I hope you don't, I hope you're not employing anybody who was around. And for hopefully that. your donors, you know, you don't have that, that, that old a donor oh, file. Oh, gosh. You know? <laughs> so yeah, there, there was nothing. Yeah. There's nothing to look at and everybody was going through it simultaneously, which meant nobody could say I've come through. Yeah. Here, and here's what you're going to experience. We were all blind. Yeah. All leading other blind people yeah. around. Yeah. And I, you know, we, the, the, the metaphor that regularly comes into my head is, you know, you're driving fast on a country road and how bright are your headlights? And my, my headlights were on bright but it was hard to tell if there was a curve coming. Mm-hmm. So uh, start there and, and, and say that um, th- this time was different and everyone dealt with it differently. I have heard stories, uh, anecdotally, not from clients. These are from, from people I'm connected with that range from um, an organization that is buying a building because they had so much money. They, and this is a nonprofit. Uh, they had so many, so many donations beyond what they're expecting. They decided to buy a building because they just were afloat in cash. Afloat in cash was the quote. <laughs> okay, I know some other organizations. Afloat in cash was not their piece. They. Mm-mm. Um, and so when you begin to, you know, kind of, kind of pull apart and, and look at, at the, the, what might be going on, um, uh, if you were, uh, local, mm-hmm. if you were, um, a, 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 something helping people helping in the healthcare arena, uh, if you were, helping people who were having financial distress. Um, uh, human services is a, is a label that's often you know, put in that, kind of, that category. Those groups seem to have done better. Okay? Mm-hmm. If you were arts, theater. Um, Maybe so, our sloth sanctuary. Yeah, the sloth sanctuary. Fabulous work by those down. guys. Uh, anyway, 
uh, you know, some 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 folks on the the different end of the spectrum had some struggles. Yeah. Um, you add local. Local might have done better pound for pound than national or international. Don't know that for sure. Um, and then, then I'm going to actually get to your question. I love that you ask a question and I talk for 10 minutes and then say, I'm actually going to get to your question. Um, uh, but hey, it's, it is your father's pocket. Uh, anyway, so, uh, <laughs> so, um, um, the whole idea that, you know, you can, you can sort this out. So we, we, a few months ago looked at a couple of the national benchmarks that were out and compared as we finished client reviews for the calendar year and just compared what, just what we told you earlier not to do. Well, it, but we did it. We did it because we know people do it and we want to get in front of it. Yeah. I, and, I just it, thought that was, our... well, that was kind of funny. Um, and, and I think we'd have just got that past them all without you bringing it up, but that's okay. Um, uh, because uh, the reason was I, I, I had so many people asking, well, you know, what, did, what did that study say? What did this? So, mm-hmm. so we compared that and rather than try to deal with that on this podcast, I'll just say, go to the website and you'll spot the case study, uh, link really easily. And you can see what we found, but basically, um, uh, it, it worked exactly as I'm saying there was, there was, if you were human services, you did somewhat better, um, uh, what I will say is that uh, even in even in that kind of the, the broad national category, local people blew off blew out the top on those those metrics, and you had uh, other locals that that were blowing out the bottom on those mm-hmm. metrics. Yeah. And so so many differences. So I just we just need to say wherever you are, that's where you are. That's okay because. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we're moving into to this new space. Yeah, because the qu- the question we were getting, and I, I, you, you and I remember we were talking last fall about how often we were on the phone with people we normally met with, mm-hmm. uh, leaders and and development VPs, almost weekly because it, it was okay. Uh, trying to figure this out now, this problem came up. the The common question we were getting was, okay, what do we do? And then recently, at some point, the question became, so what does that mean for the future? Yeah. Yeah. And everybody kind of figured out, okay, we're making it through this, whether by the skin of our teeth or we are afloat in cash. (laughs) But regardless of how, how your year went. You got another one coming. Unless you had a really horrible year. I mean, there's those outliers. But you... You had another year coming, and so everyone also had to figure out, okay, what does this mean for 2021? Yeah, and 22. And 22 and 23. And yeah, yeah, Into exactly. the future. Exactly. So, so so tell us what that meant. All right. I, I would say, first, it, 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 if you did really well, here are some things that probably happened to you. And um, so uh, somebody sent me a, a article from uh, the Bank of America private bank. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so this I'm not is not sure I could pass the yeah. authorization I, to even open. I was surprised I could you. get it open. Um, anyway, they, so this is something their, their banker sent them and it's talking about, uh, well, no, I, I'm not sure their banker sent it to them. I think this is something that was available to them because they were, they have a private banker. Anyway. Um, I think you can find it on Google. I'll tell you how to do that later. Um, anyway, so they're just talking about uh, that people that the 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 categories of fluent philanthropy, um, people who have money and resources, what did they do in this time? And one of the things that's interesting is the recognition that these people are saying, if you have a lot of money, here's what the people with a lot of money did. And I just want to call out right now. Uh, resources doesn't necessarily equate to philanthropic intent or ministry intent or desire to help with a cause. It so, means, what do you mean by that? Well, it means you have the you have the money, but you may. I, I know people who um, uh, who live in in what would be considered pretty uh, basic means who don't have a ton of resources who give an extraordinarily 
high levels because of the way they choose to live their lives. They live, they breathe, they give to causes they love. Okay. If you looked at their net worths or whatever, you'd have a hard time thinking, wow, how do they give to this? Well, it's because they, you know, they're not trying to buy new cars. They don't have a home in Aspen. Because that's where their money goes. Uh, yeah, that's where their hearts are. Yeah. That, you know, that, that's how where their heart it. leads the wallet. Falls. Exactly. So this, this study is talking out of it, out of the idea of, of what did the people, the, the affluent people did. And I'll, I'll just a couple of takeaways. And, you know, uh, if you're curious about it, Google trying to get it. Uh, the title is A Story of Generosity, Helping Your Neighbor. Um, Bank of America, or I'll send it, uh, if you'll leave. email podcast at Wanicity. There you go. We'll anyway, the man. these, this group of people who are, who, who are, have a, who are affluent, 90% gave to local organizations, uh, 35% gave to national organizations, 15 gave to global organizations. Interesting how that went local, national, global, and, and 90%, fell, fell 35, big. 15, right? Um, Nearly one in four increased their giving at a local level. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, um, it's got, this has got, pardon me, it's got a, uh, a little slider that just changed on me. Uh, 85%, let's see, households who maintain or increase giving to religious or spiritual organizations, 16% increased, 69 did maintenance, uh, basically about the same that they, they were doing. Um, uh, it, this dives into the, the areas they gave money to, uh, hospital supply chain type things, populations at risk and severe symptoms. So that's always the health thing. So the, this says a lot of what we have seen with our clients who are helping with people who deal with um, uh, people helping kinds of, of organizations and ministries they saw donors raise their hand and say, how can I help? And so uh, a lot of people who experience that, we want to say to you, if you experience that, like our clients who, who you know, again, as we've, we've alluded to, our clients had banner years um, buying, lo- well, all the, all the full service clients had banner years. You probably, uh, I'm not sure you're a, a float in cash, but you, you did well. I, I won't get into how, why you should do that. You shouldn't, <laughs> you shouldn't budget the next fiscal year based on the pandemic fiscal years because... Run to your CFO's office right now. Yeah. Um, at, at, but here's some things that, that you should take action on. A lot of, a lot of our clients, our, our new donor acquisition did so well. Uh, both digital and in print. And, and so it's really critical that you recognize may, you may have a bigger swell of, uh, uh, of new donors than you're used to. Those are people that you, you need to connect with and make sure they not only give that first gift, but they come back for a second gift and a third gift that you bring them into the fold that, that if these are people who who don't really know anything other than whatever they they gave to whatever was their impetus, that that you you connect them deeply into the DNA to the fabric of the organization that that they fall in love further with what you're doing. This is an opportunity for additional wooing. You know, <laughs> this is this is the place where you you say. Here's how, don't go with the ask yet, but go, go with them about, here's what happened because of you. Here's the difference you made. Uh, and it's not too late. Oh, it, I, you could be listening, never you could too be listening late. to this in July and think, well, it's oh, been a year did, so. We is did it get too a lot late? of donors. So yeah. here's, so, so let's just say the, the thing to be is candid and not authentic. Uh, yeah. You want to be authentic. Authentic. Just, just say, it has been so hard. Don't say we've gotten so many donors that we don't. We haven't come up and contact everybody. But say, you know, it, it has been really challenging, and I have intended to get back to you to let you know about the difference you're making. And now here's the difference you're making. And, you know, it, no one's gonna say, I didn't, Ugh, yeah, they took I'm forever really, to get back to me. And I they forget told it. Me. I don't want to know. I don't know how, the difference my this money made. I don't. Yeah. So. So connect with them. You probably, um, 
Uh, and again, one of the things that star- always startles me when I look at national averages, and again, we, that's one of the reasons we try not to, is how low some organizations' retention rates are. And retention ret- rate being I, I take all my donors who stayed and who left. Mm-hmm. Tracking how many donors who, were, who gave last year give again this year. So you you know it's if you're if you know the for profit business space it's it's how many customers continued any of that so you probably got some people who had been lapsed or who didn't continue that your retention rates pr- might have gone up although apparently nationally they went down <sighs> anyway uh, connect with them in the same way this is the place to give them that feedback that validation even if even if you've been um, Let's just say you got lazy or distracted and you, you, you haven't really gone to those people since. since. You gave them a receipt. You may, maybe yeah, you, you, did listened, the, you did the government work. Maybe you listened to a, listened to a podcast and, and sent them some kind of validation piece. Go back. It's not too late to just say, listen, I, I'm just startled by the difference you made. And, and then say, here's what you did. And don't, don't. Cite, if you cite statistics, cite a story. Here's what those numbers, you did this numerically. Here's what you did for Sally. Yeah. Here's exactly. what that means. Exactly. Here's what that looks like. Exactly. And that, that gives you a shot as we, as uh, you know, we're recording this in the early summer, as you roll toward the fall, which for almost everybody is prime sun, fundraising season, you're not going into them like an ATM, you're building a relationship. You're you're going and the, the playing the long game and and making helping them back to your point about they're going to feel good opening that envelope. You're helping them feel good, not not just like from an investment standpoint, but from the emotion of you rose up and and, and you did something that made a difference. And when you reference their standing up. They're coming into you when you reference that. That will mentally make that will make them mentally harken back to that time when they did that, mm-hmm. which is when they felt really good, mm-hmm. and then they feel they they've got that really good feeling. They're reading one of your letters, even if it's a validation piece, and they continue to associate feeling good with your organization. And like you said, that carries over into the fall because. Uh, you've built a relationship with them. They know the work you do. It, it continues to just roll forward. Yeah. And, and, and if, if, if without regard for what their motivations were, uh, assuming they weren't, and, and it's a pretty low percentage of people who just give uh, for a tax break, I think. Uh, We've tested it. And it, yeah. It, it, yeah. Uh, so, the, yeah. so and, and okay, so let's just say, so say, and this is a bit of a tangent, but we've done tangents before. So let's just say they're doing it just for a tax break, okay? I'm Mr. Big Bucks. I don't care anything about anybody. I make Scrooge McDuck and, and every horrible Dickens character look like good people, look like, you know, Gandhi and Jesus Christ. So anyway, it, 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 let's just say that I still have a lot of places I could put that just for the tax deduction. But I chose your organization. There's got to be a reason. There is a reason. Something clicked. And so don't you buy that it's a, a strictly financial decision. That is such a terrible choice to make. The choice to make is assuming they made the choice because they wanted to make a difference in the world somehow. Even Scrooge McDuck wants to make a difference in the world mm-hmm. with the nephews. Yeah. I mean, those are good, cute little good, good ducks. Little yeah, little. Okay. So, so anyway, sorry about that. If you did if if you did well, yep. Don't get too high on your hog. Don't plan. Which is such a wonderful visual image. Yeah. Yeah. Don't plan on twenty one being like twenty. Nope. It'll if be you're different. wrong, it'll be great. Yeah. What a great place to be. Keep do everything you can to keep your donors. Make those connections. Make sure they all feel very special because hopefully you did something besides just buy a building because you were afloat in cash. But you know, you you you, 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 you help you put, them know you put the difference. Bricks with names on it. That's right. So, 
if I didn't do well, yeah. if this was a yeah. really tough year, you alluded to those percentages that the really rich people dropped off at the national yeah. and the global rates. Yeah. Say I'm one of those organizations or just, I, I didn't, my fundraising didn't go well. Happens. What do I do now? Um, first resist, resist, resist one more, resist the urge to make it about budget. Okay. Make what about budget? Any communication to donors. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, yes, there are donors who love your organization who will absolutely give to help you make budget, to keep the bank away, whatever your, your hard place is. That's just not a sustainable place. It's kind of like the furniture stores in the old days who used to be going out of business, you know, for four years. The running. Stores. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and they got it's the our, signs. It's our annual and, going out of business. Yeah, thing. Right. So you only get so many of those and hopefully you, that's a card you never play. Just keep that in the bottom drawer, ready to go. If you ever have to, to, to wave that flag instead be candid with donors that it was a difficult year because they may not understand and always keep the balance of, uh, of being able to say, um, you know, uh, and not copywriting here, just talking about principles. Uh, it, it, this was a challenging year because we were facing these needs and this problem, not the light bill, not the bank, not pension payments, but whatever your cause is drilled down to its essence Go back to that and say and remind and, 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 and speak to what you do and the difference you're making in the world. And then this is a place where you can talk about that gap, the consequences that have happened, that you're still in the fight. Um, sloths. The sloths are still in need, and we've done what we can but for us to take care of this ter tragic problem with sloths, we're going to hear from people who love sloths at some point who are going to be frustrated that we are smirching their make, name. Make, <laughs> That's a great word. Good job. Uh, so uh, help help them understand. Just take them right back to the fundamentals. This this becomes a place where you drive hard on emotion, you drive hard on the problem, you drive hard on the consequence, and you. The, the one place I believe you should, you should allow your, yourself, the organization, to be heroes is you talk about if you have staff or if you have, have volunteers or you have people, parade them as, if, as, as the heroes in this moment where you say, yet, we continue to X. And Johnny... Uh, he, was working, he was working three roles. Exactly, exactly. And, and we've heard some stories like this. A CEO was telling us a, a few weeks ago about uh, they were having um, uh, problems finding uh, enough people to staff the organization and talking about people running multiple shifts because we're not closing that location. We're not going to consolidate that way. Let, this, let those people be your heroes. And as leadership, we always need to be pointing to other people and, and, and helping the donor come into this as, as the people who are going to be involved, they're going to understand, they're going to make all this work. That becomes a place where I, as a donor, um, can, 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 can um, connect with this cause at, at, its, at its most primal base place. Now, understand uh, have have had the the uh, the challenge of working with organizations that were that were sort of teetering on the brink, okay. And there's a principle that that if you're in serious trouble and you're listening to this podcast and you're a leader who 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 knows I. I always think about it as, you know, in, in, in aviation, there's the, there, they call it the bingo moment when you don't have enough fuel to get back to base, right? When you know the bingo place, when you know I've got 14 days of cash or I've got 30 days of cash or whatever it is, um, never forget that donors n do not ever want to give the last dollar. They don't ever want to give to an organization they sense is really ultimately going to fold. 
So you always have to be holding out hope. You always have to be clear about yet we will remain true to this. Uh, you don't, you do not want to give too much uh, scary information to donors because that's not helpful to fundraising. You want to be giving the information about your cause, the problem you're solving, how you've remained true to the solution, and how your staff or your volunteers, or in, if you know how to, to phrase it right, how you have remained true because this is your calling. And so you just you fight that fight, and it is, it is about... Um, uh, this is one of those uh, moments where you do rally to the barricade. You are uh, waving the flag. You are doing all of those kind of things. And this is the place, if you've ever held back on emotion or ever held back on talking about your passion, stop it. Hmm. Go for it. Go, go open that throttle. And, and if you have cried... As, as I have, you know, we know of situations where, um, you know, leaders have, have been overcome because of the stress and the pressure. Go ahead and tell the donors about that. Not to wave it around. No, but let in, them in. in a way so that they understand this isn't, because I, I, the, the commonality between if it went well or badly is your work yeah yeah and the people you're helping and that's a general sense because you may you may be doing something that isn't helping people but your work is what made donors want to come with you in 2020 your work is what made donors want to partner with you in 2019 if things went badly in 2020 these donors were with you two years ago because of what you were doing. Mm. So as you go into 2021, especially into the, the holiday season, either of those directions, go almost go back to your roots. Almost yeah. go back to basics. Oh, that's a great point. And keep it about what you do. If you're going to be emotive as a leader, it's not that I was up crying. It's I was up crying because I was thinking about Sally, who... I don't know how she's going to get the help yeah. Yeah. donors like you have provided. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what's stressing me out. Here's what I'm, here's what I'm doing to try to help. Hmm. And, and I, I, I had the experience of taking a few phone calls, uh, uh, this year from donors, I mean, pardon me, from leaders who were really afraid. And I talked to a couple of young leaders who, um, just didn't know how it was going to work out. And it, it, that is one of the things that you want to be very careful as a leader revealing to your donors because they need you to lead much like with your staff. They need you to lead, but you also can allow them into the churn that, you know, the, the, the sleepless nights or however stress and uncertainty manifests itself in your life go ahead and let them in but back to the previous two episodes on this podcast about leader voice um, uh, allow them to hear your voice in this time that you believe in the cause but boy it's been tough and don't uh, i don't think you'll make this mistake but it just reminds you brag on everybody else don't brag on yourself unless you there's just nobody, nobody for you to if, brag if you're on your one right? your one-stop shop you know yeah. And then find a way to make make still, up make up some still fake be humble. Ah, no, no, don't don't go quite that far. Anyway, so uh, uh, if it was a challenging year, um, you have the the harder battle to talk about the challenging year without whining. Whining is always bad, or blaming. I mean, it is hilarious the kinds of things that can happen in copy or or in a in a conversation when you. You begin to talk about well, people just didn't give because you were off spending. You're you know, spending and, that stimmy somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So, so be careful about that. Uh, but go at it, and and uh, uh, this is a great place if somebody is in in a challenging situation. If they want to email a podcast and, and you got a and naughty say, problem, yeah, say hey, here's send a, it here's to one. Us. Give it, give us a, a hand because we we really do. Um, uh, I want to help people who are, who are changing the world.
And mm-hmm. so, um, so the third group was people who were kind of in the middle. No, I mean, were was people regardless. who were un, un, huh? it was regardless. Okay. It was good, bad. Yeah. And the commonality, I think, still is. Back to basics. Remember why people came either last year or in the past. And don't change who you are when you mm-hmm. go into this fundraising season. If you were afloat with cash, were afloat with, afloat cash, with cash, afloat with cash. <laughs> if you're afloat with cash, validate. Yeah. If you aren't afloat with cash and you go into this holiday season, gear up. Yeah. And let the donor see you gearing up and that it's been tired. But again, in both cases, it all goes back to the people you're helping your mission. And that's why you're still doing what you're doing. Your work, people have been working three shifts. Nobody's leaving. It'd be easy to do that, yeah. but we can't because we know the people we're helping or join with us. If things were great, I know you care about this mission. We've made so much, we've made so much progress yeah. this year versus last year. Stark difference because, because of, of you, you. The fight is continuing. We, we are. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. The one thing I would I would I would say if you're on in this the second group who didn't have a great uh, year, um, reflect on Hero's journey. We've talked about that mm-hmm. several times. Um, um, there, there. One of the things that 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 I've noticed in books and movies I love is there's there's that downtime, and there is the challenge, and there is when things go wrong and the wheels fall off the bus and it's just bad. I don't like those in person, but I love them in novels and in movies mm-hmm. because that's what makes it exciting. We'll, we'll go back to that in your mind and remind yourself donors love a hero and they want to they want to join with a leader who's willing to say, hey, it was tough. It's still tough, but we're we're continuing in this. We are con- and I, I keep using fighting and battling metaphors and that's not my intention to do that but but to just say we haven't stopped we're we're going to be at work on this and because of of how important the cause is how important the people or the sloths or the the, The whatever the puppies the what the elephant whatever it is that you're doing because of this it is the cause drive back to the cause don't think about budget don't go there first Makes sense. And this is your Rocky working out. Yeah, it's beautiful. Moment. Yeah. It's hard. Here I have the tiger when, in the when, background, you when know. The score starts yeah. coming up. Yeah. This Swell is you heading music. into Labor Day yeah. in fourth quarter. And run up those stairs, you know. Yeah. 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 Come year in, that's you dancing at the top, yeah. putting your arms up. Yeah. And the stairs are longer than they look in the movie, I'll just say that, having actually run up those stairs. Okay, I haven't I haven't done it. You gotta get you up those stairs. Yeah. Yeah, it's a sprint. I might need a break at the top. It's fun. All right. Me and an old lady at the top. <laughs> well, this was a long one, so we're just going to call an audible and skip on your radar. Okay. Which is good, because what I was going to do was a book, and I'm not done with it, so, I, so next for, time yeah. I can actually say, okay, I'm done with it. And I was, I was going to do a book, too, so that'd be good. Okay. We won't talk in between, so we won't know if we're going to do the same book. That'll be fun. Okay. Yeah, you can't. Don't read my notes. Okay. Let's check it. So next week, tune in for that. And yeah, so we, I don't know. We'll keep it. We'll see how long, we'll see how long we went. It'll be interesting. I'm Steve Thomas. I'm Ryan Thomas. This is not your father's fundraising podcast. And on our next episode, we're going to talk about how Darth Vader can improve your Giving Tuesday campaign. (sighs) Give today, Luke. (sighs) Giving Tuesday. (laughs) Give on Tuesday, you should. (laughs) I'm Ryan Thomas. And I'm Steve Thomas. (laughs) Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Not Your Father's Fundraising Podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate that effort. Tune back in next week for another fresh episode of Not Your Father's Fundraising Podcast.